The sun, a dying ember in the west, cast long shadows over the foothills. Boulder, a tapestry of brick and stone, settled into twilight. Above, the flat irons, ancient and imposing, watched silently. A light breeze, cool and fragrant with pine, whispered through the canyons. William Walker, a man more at ease in nature's embrace than within city walls, breathed deeply. Beside him, Sam, his loyal husky, matched his stride with a rhythmic pant. They walked a familiar trail, one etched into the landscape by countless footsteps, both human and animal. The air held a crystalline clarity, amplifying the distant sounds of the city. Each step on the packed dirt was a step closer to tranquility, a retreat from the day's worries. The rhythmic crunch of their footfalls was a lullaby, a soothing counterpoint to the city's distant hum. William, lost in the rhythm of the walk, allowed his thoughts to drift, to merge with the whispering wind and the fading light. The trail, a winding ribbon of brown against green, led them steadily upward. With each rise the vista expanded, revealing more of the city sprawling below. Lights like scattered jewels began to wink on as darkness deepened. The air grew cooler, the scent of pine stronger. Sam, his senses attuned to the subtle shifts in the environment, paused, ears pricked. He whined, a low rumble in his chest, his gaze fixed on the darkening woods ahead. William, attuned to his companion's every sound, stopped, his hand instinctively resting on the comforting weight of his flashlight. What is it, boy? he murmured, his voice barely audible above the wind. They stood for a moment, listening, but the only sound was the wind whispering through the trees. The sun had dipped below the horizon, leaving the sky awash in shades of purple and orange. The air, noticeably colder now, carried a faint metallic tang that William couldn't place. He dismissed Sam's unease as a trick of the fading light. They continued, the trail narrowing as it entered a dense stand of ponderosa pines. The darkness here was deeper, the air thick with the scent of resin and damp earth. Sam stayed close, his unease palpable. The rhythmic crunch of their steps was muted now, absorbed by the soft forest floor. Then, William heard it, a low hum, barely audible at first, like a distant generator. It was a discordant note in the symphony of the forest, a sound that didn't belong. He stopped again, straining to listen. The hum grew louder, pulsing accompanied by a faint, high-pitched whine that set his teeth on edge. Sam whined again, a soft, mournful sound. William felt a prickle of unease crawl up his spine. He had hiked these trails countless times and he had never encountered anything like this. The hum intensified, vibrating through the air, through the trees, through him. It felt like a physical presence pressing against his chest, stealing his breath. He pushed forward, curiosity battling with a growing sense of dread. The trail took a sharp turn, descending into a narrow ravine. The air here was stagnant, heavy with the smell of ozone and something else, something acrid and metallic. The humming was loudest here, a physical pressure against his eardrums. And then he saw it, a faint glimmer of light emanating from the heart of the ravine. It pulsed in sync with the humming, a cold, ethereal glow that seemed to suck the color from the surrounding trees. He took a step closer, his hand tightening on the flashlight. Sam whimpered, pulling back on his leash. William hesitated, torn between the urge to flee and an almost hypnotic compulsion to see what lay hidden in the darkness. The logical part of his brain screamed at him to turn back, that this was madness, but something, some primal instinct, urged him forward. He took another step, then another, drawn towards the light like a moth to a flame. The ravine floor was a jumble of boulders and fallen trees, the air thick with mist. The light, brighter now, revealed its source, a circular clearing ahead, bathed in an unnatural pulsating radiance. As William drew closer, he could make out shapes within the light, tall and slender like figures carved from obsidian. They stood motionless, arranged in a circle around a central point he couldn't quite see. Their forms were vaguely humanoid but there was something distinctly alien about them. Their limbs were too long, too thin, 
their bodies seemingly devoid of any muscle or definition, and their heads. William felt a chill run down his spine, a primal fear that seemed to freeze the very marrow in his bones. These were not things of this world. They radiated an aura of wrongness, of something ancient and profoundly unsettling. He stood frozen, his mind struggling to process what his eyes were seeing. He took another hesitant step, then another, his gaze transfixed on the figures. Their surfaces shimmered, as if they were made of liquid shadow rather than solid matter. As he drew closer, he noticed details that sent shivers down his spine. Fine lines like intricate tattoos etched themselves across their obsidian skin. They pulsed with the same unearthly light that emanated from the clearing, shifting and changing like living things. And then, one of the figures moved. It turned its head slowly, impossibly slowly, towards him. William's breath caught in his throat. He couldn't make out any features, only the faintest suggestion of a face, a smooth featureless plane of darkness. But he could feel its gaze, cold and assessing like the stare of an insect. He stood there for what felt like an eternity, caught in the grip of terror and fascination. The figure continued to stare at him, its body perfectly still, its head tilted at an unnatural angle. William couldn't move, couldn't breathe. He was trapped, impaled by its gaze. Then, as suddenly as it had turned towards him, the figure shifted its gaze. It turned back to the center of the clearing, its movement fluid, almost serpentine. William, released from the grip of its stare, sucked in a breath, his lungs burning. He looked around, his heart pounding against his ribs. The other figures were stirring, their bodies shifting, the lines on their skin pulsing brighter. The humming intensified, vibrating through William's bones, making his teeth ache. The air crackled with energy, with a sense of something momentous about to occur. He felt a surge of adrenaline, a primal urge to flee, to put as much distance between himself and these things as possible. He took a step back, then another, his eyes darting between the figures and the path he had come down. He had to get out of here, had to get help, but his feet felt leaden, his body refusing to obey the commands of his panicked mind. He tore his gaze away from the spectacle before him and stumbled back the way he had come. The figures, their movements growing more animated, paid him no heed. They were focused on something else, something in the center of the clearing, hidden from his view. He scrambled up the side of the ravine, his heart hammering against his ribs. Reaching the familiar path, he didn't stop running. He ran until the trees thinned, and he could see the lights of the city in the distance. He didn't slow until he reached the edge of the foothills, gasping for breath, his lungs burning. He turned, looking back towards the ravine, but it was lost in the darkness. He stood there for a long time, his breath slowing, his heart rate gradually returning to normal. The events of the last hour replayed in his mind, vivid and surreal, like scenes from a nightmare. He questioned his sanity, wondered if he had imagined it all. But the acrid smell clinging to his clothes, the faint humming that still seemed to vibrate in his bones, told him otherwise. The city lights beckoned, promising a return to normalcy, to the familiar and the mundane. But William knew he could never look at the foothills the same way again. They held a secret now, a darkness that whispered of ancient, unknowable things. He was left with more questions than answers. What were those figures? Where did they come from? And what were they doing in the heart of the foothills? He thought about going to the authorities, about telling someone what he had seen. But who would believe him? He would be labeled a crackpot, a danger to himself and others. And what good would it do? What could they possibly do about something so far beyond human comprehension? No, William decided. Some secrets are best left buried. He would carry this knowledge alone, a chilling reminder of the unseen world that existed just beyond the veil of reality. The city lights seemed to shimmer, their familiar glow suddenly tinged with an unsettling new meaning. He turned towards them, a solitary figure silhouetted against the urban glow, and walked on, leaving the darkness behind him. Or so he hoped. 